Hello and welcome. Uh, today I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about emotionally focused therapy, which is an evidence-based treatment when working with couples and families. One of the things that I commonly see with some of the clients that I work with is sort of an underappreciation of what emotions are all about. For instance, a lot of people that I work with are very intelligent. They might be managing directors or they might be starting their own business. So from a cognitive point of view, from an intellectual point of view, they've really reached the, 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 the pinnacle of success. Uh, on the other hand, I've also noticed that they tend to miss some of the emotional parts of their life. And that's because uh, most often, and potentially you can relate with your own experience, that there really isn't a class that people take in their life that talks about emotions, how they work, why they work, why are they there. For instance, a common thing that I typically hear, especially from my male clients, is that emotions are a nuisance. Uh, it's something to get rid of, something that gets in the way of their thinking about their job or their relationship or their kids. Here in treatment, what we tend to do is try to identify what are some of the blocks to the emotions and more importantly, from an EFT point of view, try to implement five approaches or five steps really to EFT that is helpful when one person is trying to emotionally relate to another. And let me take you through those five steps. Step number one is identifying the trigger. And the trigger could simply be the situation that you find yourself. A common one, obviously, when working in a couple is potentially a trigger is uh, created by your partner. And that is by something he or she said or something that he or she did. Step number two is identifying one's immediate emotion. Now that is hopefully relatively easy to find. And that's sort of an immediate response. And that could be frustration, anger, sadness, disappointment. Um, <clears throat> step number three is looking at uh, the deeper emotion. Now this can get a little tricky because uh, I am asking you, almost inviting you to potentially consider certain things that are happening underneath the surface. Now if your spouse, for example, so so said something that was offensive to you or frustrating to you, uh, did you find yourself responding in a particular way? Did you shut down? Did you get frustrated? Did you get angry? However, the step number three uh, helps or at least suggests to focus on something that's a little bit deeper. Maybe you feel isolated or maybe you feel hurt. Maybe you feel abandoned by that conversation. Step number four is really tapping in and understanding one's needs. S common ones include a need for nurturance, a need for belonging, a need for love, a need for encouragement. Those are typical ones that we all need as human beings. Now, helping yourself to tap into and attune to some of those needs really helps to frame the relationship from a point of view where your needs are also being satisfied and therefore creating a stronger emotional bond with your partner. And step number five is really putting step one through four into uh, just a, a communication style that is easy for the other person to hear. Those typically are the five steps that I would encourage you to try in your personal relationship. Let me run through them one more time. Identifying the trigger, identifying the immediate emotion that may come up for you, looking at your deeper emotion, understanding your needs in this relationship, and learning how to communicate directly to your partner. Those are the, some steps that we use in emotionally focused therapy when myself and my colleagues work with families or couples. Thanks so much.